Dr. Augusto Zimmerman, who is a professor and head of law at Sheridan Institute of Higher Education. He is also a former commissioner with the Law Reform Commission of Western Australia and a former associate dean, research and postgraduate research director at Murdoch University School of Law. Professor Zimmerman is also the founder and president of the West Australian Legal Theory Association, a former vice president of the Australian Society of Legal Philosophy, a fellow of the International Academy for the Study of the Jurisprudence of the Family, and the editor-in-chief of the West Australian Juris Law Journal. In 2010-2011, Augusto was awarded the Chancellor's Award for Excellent Research and two School Dean's Research Awards. Finally, Professor Zimmerman has also included, been included together with only 12 other Australian academics and policy experts in Policy Experts, the Heritage Foundation's directory for locating knowledgeable authorities and leading policy institutes actively involved in a broad range of public policy issues, both in the United States and worldwide. It is therefore my esteemed pleasure to welcome Augusto to the stage. Augusto. After this uh, presentation, I can't uh, barely wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, for Phil, for your generous uh, introduction. And, uh, and thank you so much, uh, Clint uh, and Court, for the, the receiving this gift. I was not expecting. They are so beautiful. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's such a, a, an honor to be uh, engaged in this uh, important battle and uh, perhaps uh, after uh, having a few opinions on this subject I should explain why I got involved with you and others here should uh, perhaps know why I, I got to know about this issue. I was just a, a constitutional law lecture. I was not expecting to be dealing with family law issues. Well, I think Phil has mentioned that submissions, and uh, Clint has done also about the same, that submissions on the Australian government's draft family law amendment bill are due to February the 27th. So they are not giving us enough time, I can see. So it's another strategy to uh, put us on pressure so that uh, they can control the narrative and the debate. I have to say that um, my experience in attending family law inquiries is pretty unimpressive. Uh, unfortunately, and I hope that uh, we don't have people here voting for these characters, but I had some very uh, unpleasant interactions with stupid politicians that we have in this country. And, uh, and they, are really, um, uh, they never cease to amaze me at their level of stupidity. And especially this guy who is a, a, a notable writer of erotic book, uh, uh, novels and happens to be also a school teacher. Uh, his name is Graham, uh, Graham uh, Parrott, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, and this character is behind the idea of uh, further, in, I would say, aggravating the problem of parental alienation in Australia because he claims that men can never be good parents, that uh, custody should always go for the mother. This is really a despicable human being, and it's, I hope it's been recorded, all right? Because uh, I can say that I abhor this person in public. I have no problem. So submissions of this, uh, uh, to this bill are due by the February, the 27th of February. There is much to be concerned about this uh, bill. For Professor Patrick pa Paxson, uh, he is the, the leading family law professor in Australia, and he was quite, until quite recently the dean of uh, the University of Queensland Law School. 
And so he's a leading family law academic, and he says that the draft released by the Australian government stripped almost all references which encourage the meaningful involvement of both parents in relations to the child after separation. Well, one of the well-known facts about divorce is that children they tend to do much better and adapt better when they have a meaningful contact with both of their parents. Indeed, a recurring theme in the field of ch child psychoanalysis is that children of divorced parents often desire to develop a meaningful relationship with both parents. Sometimes this is uh, not so uh, clearly or objectively expressed by the child because uh, if she or he is in contact with one of the parents, there is also a deliberately a, a deliberate attempt by, on the part of one of these parents to poison the child and turn the child against the other parent. And when I was a law reform commissioner, I was able to witness this fact that unfortunately, unfortunately some parents take pleasure in destroying the relationship between uh, the child and the other parent. And what this bill, the proposal, is, do, is going to do is to actually aggravate this problem. It's obvious that this is going to make it worse. So the bill is actually uh, to aggravate the problem and not to make it better. And Clint has referred to the fact that uh, many children have uh, developed terrible issues including tendencies to commit suicide and, uh, and drop out of school because of their poor performance as a result of parental alienation. So children can be uh, deeply affected. In the United States, someone did a research about 10 years ago and he found out that most of those who were incarcerated uh, convicts happened to be uh, uh, coming from dysfunctional families. So, uh, and they didn't have a meaningful relationship with one of the parents, it's particularly a relationship with the father. So uh, there are so many academic studies and I have tried to explain this over the years. I'm actually sick and tired even of having to talk so much about this because nothing is done. And I have been uh, addressing this issue for more than 10 years. <coughs> Everything started when I was uh, a commissioner, a law reform commissioner. And in those days I was uh, 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 instructed as as a result of, a, of a, a term of reference, to discuss the, the issue of uh, uh, family violence orders. And, uh, and that was a traumatic experience, I must say, because I saw <coughs> some people who had been, had their lives completely undermined. And so can you, can you listen to me? Because Phil is giving me the water, perhaps in, I need it, but I'll, I'll, I'll have this later. But what I have to say is that some of these uh, people have had these orders issued against them for the purpose of um, preventing this contact between child and parent. We know very well, we know very well that this idiotic government, uh, politicians that we have here, are unable or unwilling to make the obvious, any intelligent, uh, clever person would be able to, to know this, the obvious connection between child support payments and parental alienation. It's quite obvious. And actually the person who does such a criminal thing, a terrible thing, that is to uh, alienate the other parent, is actually rewarded. And when I was uh, uh, a commissioner, I was horrified to see the support of the political establishment. They were in support of this. I uh, uh, manifested my objection and actually had to protest as a commissioner because they tried to use my commission for such a purpose. And they were expecting that it would make something that was already bad and turn this into something worse. And I told him, the Attorney General, that this is not going to happen under my watch. Because my commitment is to the society. 
It doesn't matter which party is in power. But he was a bit upset with me. I couldn't care less. The fact is, the fact is that uh, I just want to know, there is a problem here that I can see, that some people keep voting some political parties. Uh, the Liberal Party is a disaster, and I can't see anything good coming from the Labour Party. If you voted for the Labour Party, you are an idiot. You are an idiot. You are an imbecile. You actually should not even be here, because I don't feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for you. You should know that this is coming from them for more than, I don't know, 20 years. And how on earth you allow this to happen to your family? You are the victim. I don't feel sorry for you if you voted for this party. Do not feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for the real victims, those that, that are here because they know what's happening. They want to make a difference. Removing evidence and, and actually having, including uh, uh, husbands who were the recipients of restraining orders because they were complaining about an extramarital affair. I remember that one person came to talk to me saying that he received the restraining order because his wife was upset that was asking about the fact that she would come back home at 2 a.m. completely drunk and having an affair with the boss. And that's how she gets a restraining order to get rid of the husband. I also knew a person who actually had his bank account withdrew, of withdrawn because he was a person who decided to share a bank account with his spouse. And then, of course, the bank account was completely emptied. And after that, he was the recipient of restraining order and became homeless. When I was uh, in my office about five years ago, a lovely man gave me a call saying that he was homeless. He couldn't pay the child support because these evil people made a wrong calculation. He would have to pay even more than what he actually receives. And as a result, he couldn't afford paying his rent. And he told me that I would be the last person to talk to him and that he would become statistics after that. So he was basically telling me that he would commit suicide. I did everything I could to support him and I don't know what happened to this person. But can you imagine how I feel? Can you imagine, I, have to, I, I ceased to be just uh, an academic, I was actually begging him to not do such a thing, to, to survive this ordeal, because he had to survive. I don't know if my message was good enough, and I hope and pray that he's still alive. But you know what? In these inquiries, I have told these people exactly what I'm telling you. These people are evil because they know what's happening. They do not actually, they do on purpose because they have an agenda. And you are all the victims because the purpose is to destroy the family unit in Australia. Why is that so? Because if you destroy the family unit, you increase the power of the state. And that's what the socialists want, the globalists want, to disempower the father and to make some stupid people marry the state and receive money through government and at the expense of the victims. We are not going to allow this to happen anymore. But I tell you, the solution is not just a legal one. The solution is also political. And that's why we need this next election. Te teach the oligarchs a good lesson. Please, make sure that you do not repeat a mistake that you have committed in the past. And also, take the, the advantage, because you can never waste a crisis, to actually now have a purpose to live for and to die for. That's the purpose of saving this country and the future generations from, from such a terrible tragedy that's taking place. You have a mission to fulfill. It's time to declare war on the oligarchs and fight for our children and their survival. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And very soon, 
our friend here is going to give you the advice of how to, to make to watch this submission. But I tell you another thing, and that's the most important thing. The solution is as much political, even if, if, if not even more, as it is legal. You have to fight for your family and to resist the oppression that's taking place. We are going to prevail because Clive has prayed for us and I believe with all my heart that with God all things are possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.